Okay, so let's take a look at some examples of explosions. So what we've got here, rather crudely drawn, is a cannon. And inside the cannon, in the red, we've got lots of explosives packed in there, so that's very exciting. And also we've got this blue cannonball here. So I'm sticking with quite a general example, I'm not going to go into specific um, cases here, so I'm going to say the cannon's mass is M, oh sorry there's no units, how awful, so is M, big M kilograms, the ball mass is little m kilograms, well, we asked, uh, the, the ball velocity after is V meters per second, and the cannon velocity after is R meters per second, I decided to call, call it R because we sometimes describe this as the recoil velocity, so that's why I've gone with the R there. Okay, so let's consider the system before the explosion, because what we're going to aim to do is show conservation of momentum between before and after. So before the collision, the total mass of the cannon and ball is big M plus this length, and it's travelling at zero meters per second, so let's put a zero in there. So now let's look at after the collision. Now what it tells you is the ball velocity after is V, so that means the momentum of the cannonball would be MV, and the momentum of the cannon therefore would be the recoil, of, uh, hang on, let's stick to doing it in the same order, so we've got big M multiplied by R. So what you see, if we rearrange this, so we're taking the M, obviously the big M plus little m, both multiplied by zero gives you zero, subtracted the MV from the other side, and divided by uh, the big M, so the mass of it. So if we want to know what the recoil velocity is, what you'll find is it's in, so you get this ratio here being applied, so you've got the mass of the cannonball divided by the mass of the cannon, so obviously we'd expect a cannon to be a, a lot heavier than a cannonball, so you'd expect that to be a fraction and be less than one, so you'd expect the recoil velocity to be quite a bit smaller than the cannonball velocity, and obviously it will be in the opposite direction. So what we would say is the cannonball would be going at V out of it, and that, that which must mean um, it, the recoil will be going in that direction. Or, sorry, I should be a bit more careful with, careful with that. Obviously R is towards the right, but because R is negative, that means that in actual fact the recoil velocity is to the left. Okay, so let's make this a little bit more complicated. Okay, so in this one we're going to look at something slightly more complex. So, we've got some notation. So, M1 is the mass of the train, M2 is the mass of the cannon, M3 is the mass of the ball. There's a VB up here is the mass, uh, is the, sorry, the velocity of the ball after the explosion. R is the recoil velocity after the explosion. VT is the velocity of the train following the explosion and the 2 meters per second is the velocity of all of the parts before the explosion. So let's look at conservation of momentum here. So before the explosion, the momentum is just three masses all added together, multiplied by two. After the momentum in the horizontal direction, you've got Vb. Oh, I should give this angle a name, so I'm going to call it theta, as we usually do. So it's going to be Vb cos theta multiplied by the mass of the ball, so that's m3, plus the velocity of the cannon is going to be the velocity of the train minus We'll see the recoil velocity, and that's going to be multiplied by m2, which is the mass of the cannon. 
so let's just move this up a bit and obviously the final part to add to this will, will be your the velocity of the train multiplied by the mass of the train so in this instance um, obviously there, there's a lot of unknowns in this current equation but in a question you might be given you'd have to be told you'd, probably, you'd be told the masses of all of them for us to start with and I imagine you'd probably be told the angle and the velocity of the ball afterwards and possibly the velocity of the train following the collision or the recoil velocity and then you have to work out an unknown but that's how you go about setting up the question for these ones and I think possibly the key part here was recognizing that the velocity of the cannon it would be the train's velocity subtract the recoil velocity because obviously we're interested in the, re the resultant velocity I suppose would be the good way to refer to it. Okay.